you know, you went through that high and then the absolute bottom, that yeah. valley. Not like, you know, $1,000 or $10,000, no, bro. It's yeah. like one over a million dollars, no. Holy shit. Hey guys, welcome to our very first episode of the Modern Wealth Podcast, where we aim to empower, enrich, and help people evolve in their financial journeys. All right. So, uh, in this very first episode, I've got a very, very dear friend of mine. He is an extraordinary in stock investing. He's one of the best brokers and remisers in Singapore as well. And he's none other than Joey, a very, very good friend of mine. So, let's welcome Joey. Hi. Thank you so much, Ref, for having me here. Great to have uh, you know, to be over here today in the very first episode of uh, Modern Wealth Academy. Thank you so much, Ref. Hey, no worries, no worries. Very, very yeah. good, dude. So, can you just a bit just introduce yourself a bit to the audience with regards to who you are and uh, you know what you've accomplished over the last decade or so? Sure. So basically, I'm a stockbroker, some call it a remiser, a trading representative in Singapore. So I've been doing this for more than, I would say, 12, 13 years now, right? since about 2009. Right? So I've been one of the uh, brokers uh, has been around for quite a while. And I've, uh, we have like more than three to 4,000 clients. And, and uh, basically, we, we serve our clients well, uh, give them trading ideas. We try to differentiate ourselves as a broker. And we do also conduct um, training as well for uh, some of our students and mentees to kind of impart to them uh, the skills, right, to really you know, stay profitable consistently in the stock market. So that's what I've been doing. I've been in the stock market for quite a while now. We focus on the Singapore and even the US market. And uh, I'm a trainer as well, a stockbroker okay. as well, okay. right? And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Dude, yeah. You know, so a lot of people talk mm. about trading and yeah. a lot of people are very interested to get started. Mm. What got you interested first? What was your starting journey, bro? Why did you get started? What was your first stock that you bought, if you remember? Okay, <clears throat> so I first got started quite long ago. I mean, it was about 2007, all right? I was actually uh, undergrad in NUS. I was studying mechanical engineering. So it's totally different, right? Mechanical engineering, I know nothing about the stock market. Uh, but, you know, I went through a few uh, online, you know, webinars or seminars, I think, yeah, then, then probably at some causes, physical events, and then uh, I thought that it was quite interesting, so I read up a little bit more, and I think within a year I first got started, I bought like a stock called uh, Guaco Land or something, Guaco Land, I think, I don't know whether it's still around, but Guaco Land, and then within the, like a year or so, I think that was like the global financial crisis, and the stock tanked by more than like 30, 40% sure. yeah, so I lost like 20, 20 25, 26,000 wow. dollars, right, which is like, a lot of my hard-earned savings that I've saved wow. over army, over all my ampao, you know, savings when I was young. Yeah, so that was like about 2007. And I was, you know, kind of intrigued in the stock market. I was thinking, hey, how, how, how do people do this? And mm. I got this really good opportunity to join uh, this bank called Goldman Sachs, right, mm. in, in the investment bank. That was like in, in 2007. So I went through like about eight rounds of interview and uh, managed to, you know, get, got offered the role as an intern in Goldman Sachs as wow. in the equity sales team. So I was like in the equity sales department and we were, uh, I was assisting a team of like six to eight equity sales traders and, and sales side analysts. So, you know, it was like very hectic. I, I was only a mechanical engineering. engineering undergrad. I know nothing about the market. I mean, I read up a little bit, you know, Google a little bit yeah. then, but not really that strong. La. But after that, that was when I was working, you know, in, in the team, assisting a team of equity sales uh, specialists and, and they were advising their clients, they're looking at their charts, they have like six screens all over, some eight screens. And I was like, wow, what are they doing? And that's where I started to, to ask questions, to learn a bit more, to you know, ask them like, you know, how do they do this? How do they read? Of course, they shared me a little bit. They're very busy. And uh, you know, I went back, read up a little bit more. Next day, come back, ask, take notes, go back, read a bit more. And then that's how I got more and more interested wow. in it. Yeah. Yeah, so I was there like about three to four months right, as an intern in, in Goldman Sachs. And I think that really started my whole journey. All right? And after that whole stint in Goldman Sachs. Yeah. yeah, in Goldman Sachs, that was where I uh, became quite keen to really wanting to go all out to learn about the stock market. Right? Okay. So I think about one, or one year later plus, then I graduated. But throughout that one year, I started to learn more, read mm -hmm. up more, mm -hmm. and hone my skills even more, and then mm -hmm. you know, trade more, put more money down. And you know, thankfully, you know, the losses became not, not so bad anymore right? okay. after that whole thing, because I, I learned a little bit more. Yeah, so that, that, was, that was the whole uh, incident or that whole you know, period of time whereby I, I got keen in the stock market and mm. really go all out to, to master this whole entire craft. Mm. Yeah. Dude, I am very, very intrigued. <clears throat> you got started in the stock market yeah. at exactly one of the points of time in history, right? Like 2008, where you're talking about the global financial crisis, Lehman mm. Brothers, yeah. the entire financial market coming down, right? People 
lost their lives, committed suicide. You hear mm. yeah, so yeah, many yeah. stories. Dude, tell me about that, man. How was that for you? And, yeah. and what do you see happen around you? Yeah, I mean, for, at that point in time when I started, I was, uh, as I said, I was just an uh, intern. I was an uh, undergrad. So thankfully, you know, I started, I mean, it's still a huge amount of money lost, but I started small then. So of course I lost, you know, I think people who have put in the fortune into it, you know, the market crash and, you know, it, it could be life changing. I mean, for people who really, you know, put their life savings into Absolutely. the market, right? So thankfully, you know, I, I started small then. And, uh, but it was still a decent amount of money lost, right? I didn't have any stop loss. I was just holding on to the stocks blindly. All right. And I think that that was the period of time whereby, you know, it, it really uh, also led me to understand that, hey, the stock market is all not uh, you know, roses and it looks beautiful, right? It can go up and down. You must definitely know how to do it correctly mm -hmm. or a lot of money, uh, you know, you can just throw it down the drain and you have no idea what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where I really think that if you want to do it properly, you mm. have to learn, you have to master it, you have to put in the effort to really uh, go out to, to, to practice and, and to, to uh, you know, record your trades, to make amendments and improvements along the way to really uh, succeed. Right? Mm. So that's what I did. So I think that whole uh, period of time where I started, I mean, this whole global financial crisis, it just kind of like, you know, uh, let me know that hey, risk is quite important. You have to master that part about risk. Right? Mm. It's not just about buying and buying and hoping and all that. Right? It's really about risk mm. right? because if you don't do it properly, things can just go haywire. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. so I think I started right after, uh, you know, global financial crisis, right? So I graduated in about 2009. Mm. All right. And that was when um, I actually applied to hopefully go back. You know, I was an intern in Goldman Sachs, so hopefully I can go back to Goldman to work. But mm. it was like the global financial crisis. Nobody was hiring, man. Mm. So it's like, I, I didn't get a job there, right? So, but then, you know, I, I was very keen in stock market still. So I applied to be, uh, as a broker, we call it a dealer in one of the local stock broking firm in about mm. 2009. Mm. Right? And that was where I continued my very journey nice, uh, nice. in the stock market industry all the way to today, basically. Wow. Okay, okay. Mm. So when was your first, what, 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 what you say was your first financial breakthrough where you really saw like, oh shit man, I'm actually making money. Right? So when, did, when was that period uh, for you yourself? Like, mm. And then what caused that financial breakthrough for you? Okay, I would say that <coughs> the, maybe somewhere uh, you know, three to four years after starting as a uh, probably in, in Goldman, after leaving Goldman, right? So that's about 2007, so maybe about 2012, mm. all right, 2012, uh, 2013, when I joined Philip Securities. I think mm. by then, I probably have mastered it. I mean, like we have, we have done it for about three to four years. We have, every day we're looking at, at the markets, the stock, the charts and everything. So that was around 2013 when I joined Philip Securities because I wanted to, to build my entire career in Philip Securities, where I'm still a broker, all right? And that was where I discovered this blueprint because I realized that in the market, I think all of us know there's just so many things affecting your decisions, right? You have like, uh, you know, candlestick, you have uh, chart patterns, price action indicators, you know, so many things, right? So, you know, how do you know which is right? right? I mean, it doesn't say buy, it doesn't say sell, then who wins, right? You know, so that's the, that's the problem I had, right? There's just so many things. So I realized that it's actually uh, the sequence of things, just like baking. So I even, mm. you know, share my, my, in, a, in my webinar, my training as well. I realized that it's like something like baking, right? You can have your, uh, the recipe, you can have your, your ingredients, your eggs, your flour, your milk, buck milk and whatever, but I can tell you the exact amount to put for each of them, like 500 ml or three eggs or that, but if I don't tell you the sequence, mm. like, like which one you put first, right? Or do you put the eggs first or the milk first or the flour first? you still feel, right? Mm. So I think it's very important, the sequence. So I think somewhere around 2013, and that's where I developed this whole blueprint, whereby, you know, I can't write it down, really just write down, in, like normal, normal pencil and paper, I like, just write down and like, okay, this happens, do this, 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 then check this, then check this, then check this. If not this, then do this. Mm. So it's like very sequential, mm. very sequential. Then uh, it became clearer, mm. it became clearer, like, okay, so it's like, now I just follow. So any single trade, just like check you, okay, so uh, no, okay, no, then mm. do this, then do this. So it's very like a, you know, like a robot, like a, so it's systematic, I don't mm. think so much. Mm. Right. So after that, then you have more clarity. Mm. And I think that was when, uh, yeah, I mean, help that I joined Philip Securities as well. And we shared ideas then uh, with, with clients, we, we have referrals, people make money for their friends and family. And that's where my booking business grew as well. Mm. All right. And, and personally, my, my trading income grew as well, thank, thankfully at the point in time. Mm. So I think around two, 2013, all right, 2013, mm. 2012, that was where I was slowly starting to see some uh, success already. Mm. Uh, the market was um, yeah, made already, probably already rebounded yes. from the global financial yes, crisis yes. time already. All right, but at least my, my knowledge then was uh, slightly uh, more honed. Yeah, more honed really like, by nice, then. Right. Like. So bro, so, so this part is the exciting part, right? Yeah. Where this is the pivotal part about his story where, you know, you went through that high and then the absolute bottom, that yeah. valley. 
tell us about their journey, bro. Right? This is what you're known for in newspapers all around. So share the share with us the story. Yeah, sure. So <coughs> so basically, I mean, yeah. So 2013, you know, when when I joined Philip Security, so I said I was doing well right? at this blueprint. I was quite clear on what to do, you know, uh, as a broker, as a trader, you know, independent trader myself. Life was pretty good. I mean, I was like, wow, quite quite shocked. I mean, I can do a job that I like. I could serve my clients well. They refer their friends and. And, you know, I think if you could do a job that you really like, it's like you're not working. Like, that's, what, that's what I read about, you know, which, which is true for me at the point in time. I was like very happy, right? And so I joined Philip Securities to about 2013. And about, I would say, a, a few months later, about eight to 10 months later, all right, what happens was uh, one of my clients, all right, had over leverage. So in case you don't know, right, as a client, I mean, basically as a remisal or a trading representative in, in Philip Securities or in any other local stock working firms, um, we are actually liable for clients' losses because there are different types of accounts. Because there's some like prepaid cash account, there's some what we call uh, a contra account mm, or mm. like a margin account and things mm. like that. So uh, essentially, we are liable legally for clients' losses if actually they were to default, they go bankrupt, they don't pay and stuff. We are actually liable right, for clients' losses. So you know, at that point, I was you know quite new in the whole. I mean, I was still you know picking myself up in the stock market. I mean, in terms of the as, as a broker, right, as a top broker, I was still trying to, to find my way around, all right, so yeah, I was growing, but still maybe quite new, so I did not really think too much about that risk, you know, so I was, uh, you know, this, this client, what happens was he over leveraged and his losses came up to like more than one over a million dollars, all right, Ooh. more than one over a million dollars, so at the point in time, I was like completely, I can remember that day, right, where the, the you know, the, the, the stock just crashed and then I called the client up to see if there's, there's any issue, um, is he able to settle it, you know, is he able to just pay, and then he told me that there's, um, he's, he's tight, like there's, there's no fun, so I, sorry about it, and that's about it. You know, I was like crushed. Wow. It's like, yeah, I did like, oh my God, this is not like, you know, $1,000 or $10,000, you know, bro, it's Damn. like one over a million dollars. You know. Holy shit, bro. Yeah, so I was wow. like uh, very stressed. <coughs> I, I remember crying as well on that day when I went back to talk to my wife, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was really very depressing, all right, and I didn't really have the mood to work, all right, I didn't have the mood to work. I mean, it's like, what, work for what, right? How, how do I pay these things, right? I mean, I, I don't have the mood to work. It's like, I'm working to, I have, I have no purpose, all right, no purpose. And, and uh, every day I was like going to work, I just like like a zombie, I didn't know what to do. You know, I just, you know, praying, praying that hopefully the client will settle his, his losses, all right. But uh, eventually a few months later, somewhere around like early 2014, all right, he, he declared bankrupt, he declared bankrupt, wow. right. And of course, he, there was some, uh, you know, he paid off a little bit, but I think the losses came up to like 700 over, $740,000. Yeah, seven four zero thousand dollars. Yeah, it's a huge amount, and that was where it really hit me. Right, it's it's real. Right, this client has became bankrupt. He's not going to pay. Right, don't don't think about it. Don't hope about it. Don't you know you do something about it, or you became you can become a bankrupt too. I mean, I can become a bankrupt too. That would be another way out. All right, and then uh, if if that happens, then that would be the easy way out, lah. But I would say if that happens, then I can't be a broker. I can't you know I can't do a job that I really like. I can't. I mean, this is a job that I could really see myself doing for the rest of my life, right? And I, I like it, as I said, I like it, right? I could trade at the same time, I could advise people, I could share my ideas, I could do training, I could talk to people about it, about the market. This is what I like. So am I willing to give up all that, you know? I mean, if I be, became bankrupt. So I thought about it for a couple of months, consulted with my family, prayed, went to church, and, and really just, you know, prayed about it. And a few months later, we, I decided to fight, right? To mm. really fight. And, and I remember like borrowing about, uh, Half a billion, four hundred eighty over four hundred eighty thousand dollars from my from my parents, all right, from my uh, parents who actually actually had to mortgage their house. I mean, we didn't have the money, right? We were just normal middle income family, all right, and I was just growing uh, as a broker. You know, we didn't have the money, seriously, right? And yeah, so my parents had to mortgage like their house, and they was like lend me four hundred eighty thousand dollars, right, wow. to to pay off somebody else's debt, all right, wow. with some of my savings I had just nice about seven hundred, right? It was just short off a little bit, but. That was how we managed to just pay off somebody else's debt to the company, all right, to Philip Securities to, to wipe off so that uh, there would not be any interest. Because at a point in time, uh, you know, a few months have passed and you know, the, the debt, I mean, the losses was about more than 700 over thousand dollars, right? So I was actually paying interest wow. a month, like more than three to four thousand dollars interest a month Crazy. on somebody else's debt. Can you imagine? So I was like working, working, working. But I don't get anything at all because this money that I earn every single month just pays somebody else's interest. It doesn't wow. even pay pay down the losses or the principal. It wow. pays the interest of not mine, of somebody else's losses and, wow. and debt. Wow. Right. So it's like 
it was like you know, I, did, I didn't know what to do like, at the point in time. But insane, thank, man. Yeah, I was insane, really insane. But thank, thankfully, and thank God, we, we prayed about it. We really, uh, yeah, I mean, we stand together as a family and then managed to, to come out the whole thing. Like, yeah, wow. the whole thing. And, and uh, I would say that was around, and, and that, the thing is that that happened, this incident happened uh, about three to four months, mm. uh, three to four months before my first child was born. Wow. Yeah, so that was like, wow, yeah, dude. before my first child was born. So Talk about the stress, yeah, bro. Yeah, very stress. So my wife was pregnant, right? And the child was coming out about three to four months. It happened. I mean, what am I going to do? I mean, I was thinking like, wow, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a wrong timing or what, you know, I mean, wow. But I realized that, um, yeah, because of that incident, because I was thinking like, it's a bad timing. Right? I mean, my wife's going to bring my child is going to come out. I mean, I mean, that, you know, how am I going to raise a child, right? Where do I get the money, right? And yeah, but I realized that after my child was born somewhere around, I mean, in January 2014, I think that gave me a purpose. That gave me a purpose in life because I knew then that, as I said, I was like a zombie for three months. I didn't know what to do. I was like, just looking down on the floor. I, I was like very depressed. I think almost slipped in the depression as well, all right? I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to go eat. I just stay at home, close the curtain and, and go on self-pity. I think that, you know, self-pity, like, why did it happen to me? Why am I Absolutely. so unlucky? Why so sway? You know, why, why this client want to do that to me? What did I do wrong? You know, and then that whole thing about, you know, like, like the self-pity, right? And I was just in that whole spiral. It was very dangerous, very bad. It was just mm. going down and down and down. Absolutely. There's no reason. And the answer is, that, and the answer is there's no reason. Mm. Nobody, I mean, ask God, why? Why Why me? Why do you choose me? Why, what mm. did I do wrong? Like, oh, do I, you know, I do everything properly? Why did somebody mm. sabo me? Why did somebody, you know, do this to me, right? Mm -hmm. It was very negative, right? Very mm. negative going down mm. and down and down. Mm until like you know when when uh, my child was born mm. that was where i knew that i have to i mean not like immediately la, but i know a few days later one or two weeks later i had to step out of it really right it's like enough enough of this shit, right enough of self-pity enough of why 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 there's no there's no answer nobody can answer you all right just wake up and then you know just just get out of it and stop complaining and just do something about it right and, and that was where when I, I started to find some purpose in my life uh, because of, of my child mm. right so what came in was like was well, stress bro like why well, in terms of like uh, you know you have a new child I think that became a blessing, right? Because like once you you when my child was born, it's like hey, actually actually you don't need much money on that. Actually, mm. keep it simple. You don't need much money. You go back home. You, you see your, mm. your child. You play with him or her. You know, go back and work. You, mm. you, you get that little joy, and and that is very uplifting, lah. You you don't need like you know a lot of money actually to survive, lah. Actually, mm. so just live very simply, mm. you know. And from that moment on, we uh, yeah we just take a day at a time, all right. And I, I changed my mindset a little bit. I mm. knew that I have to step out of it so mm. I, you know just just of course i read uh, a lot of books as well self-help books mm. about mm. you know like you know what what don't kill you make you stronger these mm. are all the things which i, I read and really it's all about mindset right so about mindset right and mm. i i think it was a little crazy as well like i i see it as a as a challenge right see it as a challenge so it, it might seem a little stupid but i have to change my mindset like you know or it's only like Seven hundred thousand dollars, right? I think I can get back up. You know, in fact, it's too little. Yeah, yeah, it's so chicken fit. Like, one million cannot come on. Give it mm. to me, I can do it. You know, so uh -huh. I change my mindset. You know, uh -huh. so rather than every day like, so high, was so much, how to pay back what's your know? But rather change my mindset. Yeah, seven hundred. Yeah, easy lah. No problem lah. Okay, I can do it. I can do it. Change my every day. I talk to myself. So every day I wake up and I think I think that's very important. Anybody who's undergoing any single, I think that's what I do as well. I mean, of course, of all of us up to now, we still face challenges. We still face obstacles every day. You know, we still fight fire. You know, different. Uh, different parts of parts of our business and stuff, mm. but every day I think you wake up and before you sleep you have to uh, give give thanks. I like mm. give thanks. I think show gratitude, pray, mm. Mm. Right? just uh, thank God. So I mean the day is so negative for you. I mean every day I wake up there's like uh, debt. You know, I need payback. Right? So what happens was I have to pay back. As I say, I borrowed like half a million dollars from my mom. Right, mm. I have to pay back every single month. So whatever I get from my booking income, my trading income, whatever I get back, you know, I just I just take like one k, right, or maybe one point two. And the rest is out to just to my to my to my mom for mm. like two and a half years. Wow. All right, so I just survived for one year. Of course, my wife was working then, and he, he serviced the car, the HDB flat that we we're in. And I just one k just maybe to just pay a bit of uh, uh, meals, you know, mm. pay pay a little bit like this, you know, and, and that was uh, pretty much how we we got through it, mm. Yeah, and I would say that. Yeah, so it was. Uh, yeah, that that was the the whole period whereby. Uh, yeah, I think really to show gratitude. Mm. Like, cause as I say, the day can start off really negative because mm. you are you wake up, you are in debt, right? You know, mm. or you're like basement, right, you know. I mean, as I say, like this whole issue, right? This whole uh, incident. If if you like, let's say I've how much money, and then you just you have losses, and you take away all my money, is fine, lah. But you take away plus you put me in debt, you know, mm. plus basement, you know, bro. You know? So it's like wow, quite quite terrible. So every day I wake up, I'm, I'm negative, right? I'm basement, right? So what can I think that I'm 
what can I do that change my mindset such that I'm not negative, I'm actually super positive. I'm actually, so every day you wake up, you can start very negative, you don't think that way, but every day you wake up, like what are the three things or two things in your life that you're mm. grateful about? Mm. They are so thankful God, to God about, mm. you know? And, and that's what I think about every day, day when I wake Beautiful. up. You know, I'm thankful for my, for my child, I'm healthy. Yep. I mean, seriously, a health is a, it's a problem. It's I mean, a blessing. Yeah, it's yeah. a blessing, really. You got a child healthy. What you want? What you ask for? Yeah. Right? What, 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 what money are you talking about? You mm. got a healthy child. So think about all the good things in your life. Think, right? Hey, gee, not bad, no. I mean, mm. life is quite good. Right? But if you focus on the debt, blah, 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 my life is jala, it's tui, blah, you know, why so sweet, mm. Mm. gone. Right? So you focus on all the good things. Right? And I always ask myself, you know, which part of your life is bad? Mm. That's why I always ask myself, you know, which part up to now is so, Which part mm. of life is bad? You say, you say. Mm. So it's like, like a challenging like, like, you say, you say, you say. Then yeah. I think, think, think. Then you think about all the good things. Hey, actually, uh. not, not that bad. Sorry, uh. sorry, sorry to disturb you, God. <laughs> <laughs> my, my life quite good. Sorry, thank, uh-huh. thanks for everything. You know. uh. So it changed your life. So instead, you thank God for it. Mm. For all the good things that you have. Beautiful. For yeah, all the beautiful. things that you, you, you are happy about. Rather mm. than complain about things that you, are, you don't <coughs> have, uh, you are, you're not good at that, you know, and then you're in debt and all that. So focus on all things. So your mindset change, you become happier, and then you, you think about how you can add value to people. Beautiful. Yeah. Bro, so okay, so coming back, so beautiful I think guys, if I, I if you if you like that, if that was actually absolutely inspirational, give the video a thumbs up or whatever not, right? But Julie, I want to ask you a question, right? Mm. Uh, so you've literally seen your clients lose millions. You've seen clients make a lot of money as well, right? Make millions of dollars. What separates the Winners who win long term versus the people who you know they trade one time they lose millions of dollars go bankrupt. What's the difference, bro? Mm. What keeps people winning long term? <clears throat> I would say that the main difference would be I mean in terms of like in in general in on average right for for all my clients and, and thousands of clients to work with for some of our students and mentees. I think the main difference would be uh, the the mindset as well. I would say that most retail traders because we are brokers right we, mm. we can you know we we. we talk to clients, we know mm. how people trade, the retail traders. And I realized that most people who are not doing well, they mm. then they tend to do the opposite things. Okay. Yeah, they tend to do the opposite thing. So they will like, you know, buy a stock and mm. some of my clients, they are quite well to do. They, yeah. they have the money to throw, all right? And they, 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 they can buy and buy. So it goes cheaper, they buy, the stock goes cheaper, they buy. And they hope for the stock to actually go cheaper so that mm. they can buy, mm. all right? And they have no idea about the trend or if the stock is going lower mm. or, you know, they just want to average down, mm. right? And then mm. that's, the, that's the thing in terms of uh, the mistake that most people make, they average down. And mm. if they do that on stocks which are really weak, all right, they have, there's no clear signs of a reversal and you know it's just in a downtrend going down and down I think you know a stock can just go from like 10 to 8 to 5 to 2 dollars and even go bankrupt right I mean a stock and they just keep on buying stocks like that right so th- those are uh, I think the main mistakes that people are making psychology right the whole emotions they just cannot get over the fact that uh, you know they have really invested in stock they want to try to lower down the cost price and they put more money they're throwing good money over bad money mm. thinking that one day it will all finally recover and it can just like break even or at least make some money mm. but no so, most of the time I look at their portfolio you know and so my clients have like 20 30 over stocks you know and I look at them and I say hey, when why do you buy all these stocks like you know when when why are you keeping on to it why are you holding on to it they have no idea why they're holding on to it right they're holding on to it I think the main reason is because they're making some losses mm. and it became a bit of a bigger loss it became mm. a huge loss and after that they just leave it there and they just do nothing about it mm. right so more than 20 over 30 stocks portfolio and most probably don't want to look at it. I mean, it's very painful to look at it. So like, sure, wow, sure, I lose sure. so much money, you know, very painful. Yep. Yeah, so I would say that that is the, uh, the main reason why most people fail. They, they don't want to acknowledge the small loss and they allow that small loss to eventually become a medium-sized loss and eventually the medium-sized loss becomes a big loss, right? And that, you know, is a huge drawdown on your initial capital, mm. right? And it's very hard to come back if you, you know, you, you draw down too much, you, you know, you hit your whole uh, capital, you wipe out a lot of your capital. Mm. It's just hard to come back to that same level. So I think, it's very, I think it's very important to, to manage risk. I think that's what we teach as well. Yes, yes, definitely yes. risk management is quite important. Mm, mm, mm. What are some practical strategies that somebody can use to really remain resilient in this world of trading, bro? Mm, practical strategies. For me, I would say that I focus mainly on two strategies. Mm. Uh, so two strategies. One, one of it is what we call the one good trend strategy. Sure. So it's about, it's nothing new. I mean, it's been around for a while. Of course, we, I have my own tweak and own uh, blueprint and how, how we look at certain things differently. But essentially, we want to be in the same direction as the trend. So as we call it one good trend. So mm. one good trend is really what you need. La. You don't need like two or three or you know, so many trends, just need one good trend. Of course, you want to uh, make sure it's the right direction as a mm. trend. You mm. want to affirm the trend, make sure you're along with the mm. trend and not against it. All right, And that's where you try to take positions uh, along the trend at 
good zones and what we call areas of value. I think all of us know about the areas of value or, or zones whereby it gives us a higher reward to risk and we ride the trend. Mm. All right? And we try to maximize our profits along uh, with the trend until the trend reverses or okay. until you know, there are some signs of weakness. Sure. Right? So that, that is pretty much the strategy which I teach and which, what I use as well and okay. what you know, this, the ideas that we share with clients is what we use. Uh. So I think that is the the thing to really focus on. I think most people, as I say, they, they don't really understand about the trend. All right, mm. they're going opposite the trend or maybe they think the trend is up, but actually it's down, mm. all right? And at worst, they just keep on buying, all right? So we try to focus only on strong counters, which are at least in the uptrend, all right? Or at least not going down, mm. all right? So, so that is where you have a higher chance of uh, being right, all right? Being right rather than if you go against it, it's like you, it's, there's no fight, right? You're fighting a trend, there's, there's no way you can win. Uh. Sure. Yeah. We have heard so many inspiring, you know, stories from Joey, you know, it's inspired me so much, give me so many ideas. Let us know in the comment section down below, what would you love to hear from Joey? What are some of your burning questions for Joey? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you've enjoyed this podcast so far, make sure you like, comment, subscribe to our channel so we can help the channel grow to reach more viewers. All right, so Joey, you know, for many people who are beginning and starting out, all right, they really, you know, they're wondering, there's so many things. You type in the internet, you get so many questions, so many answers, right? But coming from you being an experienced individual, let's say somebody is coming out of a university just like yourself, right? Mm. How should they get started? What instrument should they get started in? What are the skills they should master if they really want to achieve that financial freedom that you have? Mm, okay, very good question. So I would say that for, for newbies, you know, when I, when I first started out, you know, I was thinking that you know, all stocks are the same, right? You know, you just buy one and hopefully you make a little bit of money and then you, you sell it and you, you move on to the next stock. And you know, you buy an one, hopefully you make and then you move on to the next stock. So that's that what most people start off with, right? They start off thinking a little bit short term, all right, more short term, they buy a stock, they hope to make and then they move on to the next one, the next one, next one. And somewhere along the line, you can't win every single one, right? Mm-hmm. So somewhere along the line, you'll probably lose one of them. And what happens when you lose, as I say, most people will hold on to it. And that's what I did as well, right? Hold on to it, and the small loss become a big loss, and eventually it become a huge loss, and you leave it there. And then you buy another one, and the same thing happens again. You win, 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 and then you move on to another one, you lose, and you hold on to it. All right, so I would say that what happens is that what, what, most, what most people can do is to actually um, start off with a very clear mindset or frame of what you want, right? So if you are a newbie, um, instead of just thinking about trading short term, what could happen is that you could do both. Uh, long term and short term, but don't confuse like you know, short term and then because of some losses you become long term. Right, you could start off with building a longer term portfolio. Right, one whereby it could be uh, based on the index, the the SPY, S and P five hundred ETF or REITs or certain blue chips, the bank stocks, and try to diversify a little bit. All right, and you know that this portfolio is for you know a, a different purpose. It is for you know a bit more defensive. It's a bit more. You might not make a lot of money, all right, but at least it's pretty defensive. You get a feel of the market. You get to grow a bit of confidence. You try to time your entry better in this uh, set of stocks, the ETF. You know the some of the reads that pays out a pretty good passive income, dividend income, and all that. So once you have this portfolio of stocks, right, then you know that okay. Uh, that's where you're a bit more confident, all right? You know that this is a longer term portfolio. You don't, I mean, of course, you can make changes, you can get in and out over the next few months. But once that is done, then you can focus on your short term, all right? And now you know that that is short term, right? Mm. That is meant to, you know, to, to get out, you have a plan, you, you get out if it's not right, you know, you don't hold on to it like, you know, long term, that is done, right? That is mm. done. But now you can trade short term, you can do it on uh, certain instruments that we use, like CFD, contract mm. for difference. And that's where, where we are doing on CFD, you know that. Your, your mindset is a bit more like, yeah, it's a short-term trade, right? It doesn't, you know, the trade doesn't go so well. You have to get out, you have to see your stop loss or you protect your profits and all that. So at least your mindset, you know that that's short-term already, right? Mm. You would not mix it up with going back to that long-term because your long-term portfolio is already set, right? That mm. is done, right? Now it's just for you to take a little bit more risk, a little bit more activity or swing, swing or position trading to mm. get in and out, but it's more of a short-term, uh, you know, strategy, right? Mm. Which you can use. So once you have these two strategy mm. and you're very clear about it, then uh, you know, that, that's where you will most <coughs> likely succeed rather mm. than just hopping into it and buy one stock, you have no idea would be, this stock is it a short term or long term or mm. you know, it went from short to long term mm. and you get mixed up and most, most often than not you will end up with some of my clients who, you know, who have no idea what they're doing, they are just buying and buying and buying like shopping and that, you know, just buy like free, you know, you know, keep on the stocks and then more than 20 over 30 stocks and they have no idea why the stocks are even there in the first place mm-hmm. because they probably bought it like 5 or 10 years ago, mm. right? Maybe at the point in time it was good but now it's like it just came down by more than 50, 70, 80 percent, mm, right? And just mm. they also don't want to sell it because if they sell it, you realize your losses, mm. right? So they just hold on to it, right? Mm. And, and 
one thing about that is that if you're holding on to stocks like that, there's an opportunity cost as well. Because you know, so, so what we advise is that you know, if there's really no clear signs of these stocks moving back up, and, mm. and you know, why not just you know, yeah, maybe take partial, you know, cut partial, you know, get get back some funds, you know, mm. and then put it into some stock. At least gives you some dividend income, or at least there's some signs of it moving mm. up, and mm. to get back your capital rather than going lower. So, Dre, I want to ask you a question, right? So, you know, you talk about some of these bad habits that mm. many people have, right? Yeah. I'm sure it's not one or two, yeah, but many, lot, I see it lot. myself as well, right? Yeah. So many of them have these bad habits. So, I want to ask you a question, right? So, uh, I'm sure that you've made mistakes yourself, right? You've made mistakes yourself with regards to, uh, you know, maybe stocks that you've held on to for too long, but you didn't have your stop losses and stuff like that. Mm. Tell us two stories, bro. Tell us about a stock or a position that you lost a shit of money in, again, besides the besides the debt that you got into because of your client, mm-hmm. right? Tell us about that and maybe the story behind one of the best winning trades that you have and what, how did you uh, get it? Okay, so maybe for losses, I would say like, um, yeah, maybe somewhere a few years back, I would say, what is the name of the stock? Okay, so maybe I can share with you, I would say some of those stocks that we were looking at a few years back, they was doing quite well. I think they were in the... Uh, the palm oil industry or palm oil, like we have some stocks like Golden Agri, or I think these were some of the stocks that were doing quite well. All right, but at that point in time, I was, um, I think I didn't really, I uh, was like a bit too emotional. So I think some things, some things you have to learn as well, which I'm still trying to hold my skill, right? You try not to be too emotional in any single stock, right? Because sometimes you can read reports and, and it was, you know, target prices going up, research analysts covering it. And you try to find, uh, reasons for holding on to the stock, right? Even though technically on the chart there are some signs of weakness, so there are some stocks which I which I look at, you know, like like uh, Golden Agri, which which came down quite a bit. Uh, we have some stocks like uh, Bumitama Agri, some of the palm oil stocks that were doing quite well at that point. In time. I think that was a few years back, and I held on to it, right? So I think there were some losses, and the losses was not small, right? It became a little bit bigger even more than it was supposed to be you know to be kept smaller all right so i think that was the the lesson i learned as well whereby every single trade you know i look at my you know i look at my my workbook my checklist i still want to learn to to follow so same thing when i teach as well you know during our trainings we teach about risk management we teach about psychology emotions sometimes it's a good reminder for me as well because Mm. sometimes you know we're all humans right so sometimes we were you know, not follow the rules. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you not follow the rules, right? Sometimes mm-hmm. you know, like we, we see a very good stock, and of course we have to do like you know proper uh, position sizing out there. You don't want to wear any whack, right? But sometimes you know, you, ah, this one really can like this this way. And of course, sometimes it really pays off. Sometimes it does not. But the thing is that we still try to follow the rules, right? So you have to acknowledge that hey, you're not really following the rules this time. All right, make sure don't do it again. All right, and and uh, so I think that that's a lesson I've learned. Uh. So I think we, uh, the losses like it could be like more than 10, 15, 20 percent uh, in terms of the price dropping mm, down. Mm. All right, so um, that's one thing that I'm still learning. All right, I'm still learning. All right, and along the way, I think you get better because as I say, you, you the more you practice, the more you are more like a, a robot. You're like more like a robot. You don't really uh, put too much thought. All right, it's very systematic about a trade. The time you get out, you get out. All right, and. Uh, that, that is pretty much one of those traits that, I mean, one of those sectors that we were not doing that well, all right, when it was doing well, but it, the tight turn, but I did not get out fast enough, all right, and, and yeah, there were some losses there. So can I ask you, maybe this is something that audiences would love to know as well, right? So maybe <clears throat> right now, at this given point of time, what are maybe some companies or maybe some sectors that you feel people should keep a lookout for, right? Do you, do you, do you see further bullishness in the markets? What companies, what sectors, anything in particular? Mm, I would say that in terms of the, the US market, we are looking at the um, energy sector, the oil and gas sector. Since last year, of course, they quietened down a little bit and the tech stock started to push up. So we look at stocks like uh, you know, the oil and gas, alpha metallurgical resources that push up quite a bit over the past uh, few weeks. Uh, MPC, Marathon Petroleum Company, quite a few places, right? So quite a few US stocks in the energy sector. And even like the, the tech stocks like you know, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Alphabet, and uh, these are some <coughs> of the tech stocks whereby NVIDIA as well. We're, we're seeing strength and we have covered it actually because I have a, a inner circle group. We have a, a, this service called the Monthly Age whereby we share some of those top US stocks in mm. the portfolio. And average gains for the entire portfolio is more than 40, 50% gains since the starting of the year. Wow. All right, yeah. So that's why we share some really top US stocks in the energy sector, in the tech sector. And I think the market has really pushed up quite a fair bit since like January, February yes, this year. Yes, right. Of course, yes. the past one, two months was a little bit there. Yep. All right, but now, I think it's starting to stabilize and it has a really turned 
uh, bullish. I think some people were expecting you whether would that be a recession, will it come back down to back to mm-hmm. last year? Mm-hmm. I would say the market's a bit more bullish, all right, um, now and and there's still a lot more room for growth, especially some of the tech stocks mm. and like like uh, Nvidia, applied materials, uh, some some of those that we like as well, like um, Broadcom, you know, some of the US stocks. This mm. uh, some of the stocks in our portfolio, right? But if you want to find out more, you can check out this service called the Monthly Edge. That okay. that's where uh, we do have a portfolio whereby we have a live call. We we run through all the stocks. In the where portfolio. do they? Where do users? Where do readers uh, find out about this? Uh, it's uh, those who are on my email list. That's okay. where we share a little bit. Or okay. we we'll share to uh, to to our people on my email list to my clients as well to okay. find out a bit more. Or we, <coughs> we can just go and Google right the monthly age. We try to keep it a bit more exclusive or right? exclusive. So we have about uh, more than three hundred over uh, subscribers mm. to this service. All right. Very so nice. uh, it's it's a paid service. All right. Okay. So but that, that's where people. Um, don't have to. I mean, pretty much we do the hard work, lah. You don't have to uh, catch the fishes, all right? I'll pretty much give you the fishes and tell you why I did the fishes that I've caught and then what to do with the fishes, right? So Very nice. it kind of like save time. We have done all the heavy lifting and hard work, and uh, yeah. So this is a subscription service that we've run for about two years now, all right? To to really share more about the U.S. market. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So, dude, can I ask you a question, right? So, you know, you've been involved in, you know, um, the broking business. You've been training students. You give out monthly age and everything, right? So, why, why do you, uh, after knowing how to trade and all that stuff? So, what is your passion and why do you teach? Why do I teach? Good question. So, I think that's a question we get asked quite often as well. I would say that, you know, when you know, since like twenty, I started teaching. I would say somewhere around twenty. Uh, 16, right? Mm. 2016. So that was when, as I mentioned, we, I had this whole debt. I mean, my clients left for me. So about 2014 to 2016, about two and a half years. All right. And thankfully, you know, after taking each day at a time, day by day, living simply, we, I managed with my family to get out of the debt around mid of 2016, about two and a half years, right? And that was when, that was where it really started. So I wanted to really help people, you know, who were once in my shoes, right, where, you know, of course, I hope that nobody will go through what I've gone through, right, but people who are really in my shoes, they, they're trying to figure out how it works, and to really help people who are like that, and they have no idea how to get started, and to let them know that, hey, actually, it's not that difficult, right, if you follow the right blueprint, the right system, the right step-by-step uh, checklist, it, it can be done, right, mm-hmm. you just need somebody to show you the way, right, to show you, of course, it must make sense to you, right, if it, you can't align with the person, it doesn't make sense, then of course that's, that's the wrong way. But if you feel that, hey, yeah, this makes sense, I mean, this is simple enough to understand, then go for it. So I think that really started whereby I felt that, uh, you know, I, I could teach. I could teach because all this while, all this while since 2015 until like about five, six years, I was thinking I'm a, I'm a broker. I'm a broker, I'm a stock broker. I'm just playing the you know, stock broker. I'm mm. not a trainer. I, mm. I, I, can't touch, I can't talk on stages. Mm. I know nuts about that. My, mm. I get scared when I talk on stage, right? Mm. So I know nuts about it, right? But Along the way, I, I honed that skill as well, thankfully, mm, all right? Mm. So I became, uh, ho- you know, hopefully I got on the stage, I, I, I uh, became a little bit more confident, all right? Mm. And that's where I continue honing the craft as well. And uh, yeah, so I, I realized that, yeah, I, I should not just, you know, go on with the stockbroker mentality, which mm. I had when I first started, which I still am now, but I could also share what I know, all mm. right, to people who want to learn more, mm. all right? And it's a win-win because if you share, I mean, of course, we can't share for free, right? I mean nothing comes for free. Sure. I, I think that anything comes for free, people probably wouldn't pay, pay or pay much or pay attention yes. or you know put effort into learning. Because you know if it's free, you attend you, you attend something and it's free. Normally you just think oh, it's free, you know, there's no value to it. Okay. And those who pay will actually uh, want to learn, they take mm. it seriously, they put in the effort, the commitment, the time mm. Mm. and they learn. And I, I think people who, who do that uh, they are successful, right? Because they they are willing to to you know because there's a value to it mm. and they are willing to put in effort to master that, that whole value. Mm. Right? So there's a cost to it. But it's a win-win because when, when we teach, of course, it's not free as I say, there's a cost to it, there's a fees to it. But when you pay, all right, you are more committed to learn. And for us as well, I would say that it can, you know, why would trainers teach well? I would say that it, you know, with this uh, you know, fees that we, we earn, I mean, we can put it back to the market, we can trade more, we can grow our capital more. It's a win-win. All right? Absolutely. It's a win-win. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's how I see it. Bro, so I have one last question to wrap the entire thing up, right? So for a new person who's coming on board, right? Uh, what would you say are maybe three things pe- they need to master, right? Really master to become, you know, really profitable in this world of trading? 
Okay, three things to really master. Yep. I would say that the first thing would be uh, emotions, right? Okay. Emotions. So I think that's what I cover as well, right? In one of my key topics. So emotions, something like psychology, right? So you can have the best strategy, all right? You can use whatever plan. It could be your strategy, it could be my strategy, it could be any other person's strategy, it could be some YouTube video strategy, right? But if you don't master this in terms of your emotion, in terms of your psychology, in terms of like hoping or, or um, you know, fear, all right? I think hope, fear, regret. Right. These are the common emotions or you are not comfortable with uh, taking small losses. It's all about emotions again, right? So you hope and hope and hope. Eventually, you, you hope that you recover, but it, it goes down and down. All right. So that, that is the main thing. I think the emotions, you have, to, you have to really master the whole emotions, right? So you have okay. to acknowledge that sometimes it's normal to feel that way, all right? To feel like you want to just hold on to it. You feel yeah. like you want to hope, right? But you have to acknowledge it and tell yourself that that's wrong. Right? Okay. Don't do it, right? So I think that's, that's what one. I learned, right? Number one. Okay. Number two would be I would say uh, to have a plan, right? to have a plan when you're trading. I think most people think that winning is all about, um, you know, you, you make and you make and you try to always make money, but you, you can't make money all the time. Right? Yep. You have to know that it is normal, it's perfectly normal to lose money. All right, if you can lose 30, 30% or 40% of the time, right? and you, you have a win rate of more than 60% or 70%, that, that's good enough. Right. In fact, if you can just half, right, 50%, so 50% mm. you win, 50% you lose, you can still make money, all right? Absolutely. Why? Why? Because basically, I think that's about the, like a casino, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you, you, that's where the age, because you want to, even it's half, half, 50%, you make 50%, you lose, but when you're making, you make more, yeah. right? But when you're losing, you lose less, you still yes. make, right? Absolutely. But now, if a higher win rate or maybe 60 to 70%, uh, that's even better. Definitely. So I think it's to know that you can't win, Every single trade is okay to lose, but try to lose lot. Uh, try less. to lose less. Okay. Lose less. Try to win more when you're winning. Sure. Right? And overall, uh, when this builds up, you you see your results consistently in the long term. Cool. All right. And I would say the third way would be my strategy. I would say. Uh, I sure. mean, uh, to have a system. To have a system. So yeah. you, you can use any strategy. You know, it could be trend trading. It could be some uh, more. You know explosive strategy or it could be a bit more faster strategy more fast paced day trading i'm not a day trader but some mm. maybe some people are good at day trading i i, I stick to what i'm good at sure. uh, more for swing uh to position trading could mm. go on to a position for a couple of weeks to maybe a few months, months yep. all right so that's what i'm good at mm. so i think stick to something that is comfortable with i mean if you're like working and you don't have time to monitor markets and you want to do day trading i think that can be quite difficult mm. all right so do something that you're comfortable with that, that suits your style mm. all right and if you have a system to guide you as well as i said mm. emotions or, or trading plan all this boils down because we leave this to ourselves right to mm. think about it and, and that's where the emotion comes in but mm. for us like i have this strategy called the one good trend focus mm. on the trend and all that right and i actually built or develop a strategy i mean sorry mm. develop a system based on this strategy, based on a very mm. specific set of criteria, based on back-tested data, mm. all right, and we develop this system. So this system, you know, it's like, it, it keeps things very systematic. There's like uh, a bullish signals or bearish signals. There's a trend and mm. guides you a little bit more. So sometimes when I'm lazy, I just look at the system. I can just type the name of any stock Beautiful. in there, whether it's Apple or, 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 or DBS Bank or SIA or mm. Microsoft, it doesn't matter. I right? type the name of any stock gives you a quick indication of where is it, are there any bullish signals or bearish and you want to be very careful nice. if you see a bearish signal or if the trend is like red and turning down. So that system um, keeps me in check as well, right, whereby, you know, sometimes, and it keeps many of my students and mentees in check as well, so that this, this system just keeps things a bit more systematic, more sim nice. simple, I would say, yeah. That's very, very insightful. Dude, so just to end off, you know, how can people find you? How can they look you up and stuff, right? If you want to share? So um, I have a YouTube channel, all right? And the YouTube channel name is my name, Joey Choi. All right, Joey Choi. So you can just Google my YouTube channel. That's where we do share some weekly videos on certain stock ideas. So we do have some training as well. Short trainings, like 10, 15 minutes long. We try to do it once, at, or once every uh, week or so, all right? So that's where I add value to people as well. Or you can also come aboard as a client of mine in Philip Securities uh, for some uh, those who want to find a bit more, um, you can just Google my name, Joey Choi, or it can be on my email list, that's where we share a bit more. And as a client of uh, mine in Philip Securities, that's where we share some ideas by WhatsApp daily as well, all right, to, to clients, to just give them some value, or give them some direction on the, that, uh, on the stocks that they can focus on as well. All right, yeah, so you can find me on Facebook as well, YouTube, Facebook, all right, and that, that's where we do share some, 
uh, ideas and videos daily. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joey, for that inspiring story. And you know, I think there were so many uh, educational points that you shared that people can really take away and apply immediately, right? Like especially, I love the part about the three things that people need to do as well, right? So guys, uh, please let us know in the comments what was your favourite part, what you really enjoyed, what do you learn from this video? Let us know so that we can actually know, you know your feedback as well. Let us know what you'd like to ask Joey as well in the comment section, right? So that would be amazing. Uh, and one more time guys, if you really want to follow Joey, his weekly videos and everything, please follow his YouTube channel, just Google Joey Choi and you can see the descriptions down in the comment section below as in, in the description as well, right? So Joey Choi on YouTube, uh, make sure you subscribe to The Monthly Edge. If you haven't already, it will be absolutely amazing. It will add so much value to your lives, right? So again, one more time, thank you so much. Uh, let us know what you enjoyed about this video and who you like for us to bring aboard for our next shows as well. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Modern Wealth Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.